Hi, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today for Tornado's update, I want to try to get a little more detailed in some of this bird stuff. So we have Tornado here in position one. We have the middle favorite from that last critique I did between the three boys. But I also pulled out one of my old ladies. She's two and a half years old. And believe it or not, she's pretty comparable to these boys. But I'm gonna try to point out some stuff about each of these and how they might complement each other in a breeding situation. But first, the numbers. So Tornado, he's at 17 weeks old now. He was at even seven pounds for a six ounce, six ounce gain over top of the six pounds, 10 ounces that he had last week. The visiting male that we're using today, he's at 20 weeks old. He weighed six pounds, three ounces. And the visiting old lady, she weighed six pounds, 15 ounces. So she's heavier than the middle male and about the same weight as Tornado. Each of these birds have differences between them and there's some similarities. And we're gonna break that down and talk about the good and the bad and how things might go. We're gonna talk about boys first. Tornado buddy. How you doing? So he's the big guy with the growth rate I've not encountered before, but something in the breeding clan I used presented it. And now I have a couple of up and coming birds with it. He's just the first. And what's contributing to that is his overall carcass size. That's the length of his back, the depth of his body, the depth is the up and down portion, and the width of his body. From every angle, he's just a really big bird. I don't know where he's gonna finish, but we'll see. I have some concerns about how small his comb is for his age, but there were two females in that pen that had tiny combs. So I'm hoping it's an expression of a smaller comb trait and not an indicator of something off in his testosterone levels. This guy, his comb is spot on for his age. It's not too big, it's not too little. But his body is significantly different from tornadoes. The length is similar, but there's a big difference in depth. And that's that top to bottom in the chest. It's kind of like he doesn't even have a chest. But when I handle him, there is a chest and it is meaty. He's got a lot of fleshing up in the front of him. So he's not a bony bird, he's just funny looking. This hen here, weighing more than the guy next door and being almost equal in weight to Tornado, she's probably carrying at least half a pound of fat. So meat wise, yeah, I said it. <laughs> Meat-wise, she's probably really six, six and a half pounds, something like that. I wouldn't know unless I processed her to see what the fat content was. Or I could force a diet on her and do a 12% feed for about a month. And that would trigger a molt, but it would also trigger weight loss. And that would let me know her real condition. What's nice about her, she has the bluing in her beak. That's a coloration that's desired. Her comb's too big, but that would go with both of the boys. But her chest is massive. Will you stand up a little more? 
Or are you trying to make a nest in here? Maybe come forward so we can see you. Come here. You're all right. Temperament-wise, she's a bit of a pet. <laughs> she's pretty easy to work with. I like her a lot. But that's not why I kept her. I liked her really tight feathering. I liked how tidy her wings were. But this chest... It's very prominent. It's very fleshy. It's also very long. So if I were to put her with either one of these males, one of the downsides would be where her leg positioning is. She has all that chest because of where her legs are positioned. Where his legs are positioned are also set back a bit. And that could compound in the offspring and make their stance even worse in terms of levelness and shape. But this younger guy with this older female could also help give us some offspring that are more like Tornado. Because that's where Tornado came from. <laughs> I was experimenting and playing around and you get some results that way that might be a surprise. But she had growth rate, flushing, overall shape. Look how long her back is. Let me see if I can get my whole hand in there with her. You want to turn just a little bit? My whole hand fits on her back, if I can get that angle right. She's a big girl. She's been a pretty regular layer, too. She's been in here nesting, but I'm not going to anticipate an egg from her today. But you can kind of see in here where her leg is. Well, if she would cooperate just a little more. I don't know. I'm pretty sure we would see an increased size with a boy like this, but they're probably gonna be too front heavy and not have the best balance going on. The downside, if she were to go with a guy like Tornado, between her size and his size, they're going to get bigger still. And that's where I might run into issues. Seeing some funny stuff by having the delicate bones, because his bones aren't that thick. And hers aren't either. Big bodies, the various positions of the leg, probably most of what they would hatch would be freezer birds. They probably have rock solid temperaments though. <laughs> Tornado still doesn't have the big open tail that I like to see, and hers isn't as wide as it could be so we might see some more closed in tails in that sort of pairing but this guy has a big wide tail in terms of the spread of it so we might see some pretty good tails out of that mix tornado i wish you'd back up stand up let us see you some more. Between Tornado and that hen, the way that they feel here is pretty similar. You can hardly feel the keel at all. But he doesn't have that bluing in the beak that she has. 
So in a perfect world, we would see that in the offspring. She could do a lot to darken the leg color on both of these guys. They both have blue feet, but they're not that dark. She's also pretty short in the leg. Don't holler, you didn't even lay an egg. You're pretending. But I like to try to find the balance or offset differences when I'm thinking of who's gonna go with who. Sometimes he stands like he's almost too wide. But I think a girl like this would compliment that. Help bring it in line. I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk over these birds. She's going to set off the whole barn. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. But that's just some food for thought. But these two boys, they're so different from each other. <laughs> Every season, I find something to be amazed about. And this season, it's this level of variation I've created with the various hatches I did from different birds. And I only used one bird from the outside. And it was interesting to see the spread of genetics and what influence that one bird had over my assortment of hens. And then when I bred back into my own line, I got this monster and the other one's coming up. It's going to make next year really exciting. She'll definitely be one of the girls I'm hatching from next year. I just haven't settled on which boy it'll be. If I give 30 days for her to clear out um, genetic donations from a particular male, then I can certainly put her with a different male and try a different arrangement. Just to see if I get a better result, the same result, different result. It'll let me know how her specific traits pass forward, regardless of the male she's with. This is how I spend my winter. Looking at birds, theorizing about how breeding arrangements could go. Figuring out what my coop arrangements are going to be. But it's really neat to see this seven pound bird minus one ounce and her being a female. And this seven pound monster. Yeah, we're talking about you. But them being about the same weight, they're still pretty different from each other. All right, that's all I got. I got to rush through chores because it's plenty cold here today. More on this later.